Well, if you've been following my channel, you know that I've had a bit of a love-hate relationship with this 8-gallon uh, curved front tank from Hyger. In the very beginning, when I was first setting it up, I ran into some difficulties with smaller fish getting caught between the factory-provided filtration unit and the back wall of the tank. And that created some initial frustrations, uh, which finally I was able to resolve by just pulling out the factory-provided filter, an internal filter, and replacing it with a, with a small sponge filter from uh, the aquarium co-op. That pretty much solved the problem. I didn't have any more fish loss after that. Uh, but there were other factors with this tank which, um, which made it one of my least favorite tanks. Uh, in particular, the fact that it had become a bit of an algae factory and uh, was growing just a tremendous amount of, of algae. And so I finally decided to go ahead and break it down. And you can see some of the, some of the algae still on the, on the back there. And so I went ahead and I removed the, uh, the cherry barbs that were in there. There was a male and female and one baby uh, cherry barb. Took them out along with a few uh, pagoda snails and, and went ahead and, and drained it. The, um, the draining of it, the siphoning of it, was all put down into a bucket and then dumped out. And then I cleaned out all of the effluval, I think it's pronounced fluorite, and I took the sponge filter and put it in the beta tank so that it could keep the uh, beneficial bacteria that was on it, keep that alive so I could have an instantly cycled tank. So uh, goodbye, uh, Horizon 8 gallon. Not sure if I'll use this tank again or if I'll just give it away to someone who wants a starter tank. So then I needed to set up the space for um, the new tank. And don't ever throw out uh, any shelves from Ikea. They do come in handy. We had a, we had a bookcase that uh, arrived with a little bit of damage. So Ikea went ahead and replaced it. And so we, uh, but I kept the shelves because I knew that someday I might want to use them in the fish room. So I used them as the uh, base or foundation just to give the bottom of it a little extra strength on top of this old Formica garage shelf. At first it was pretty pretty much off level but after adding a little bit of tile and a few other items I was able to go ahead and bring it bring it to to level and then go ahead and uh, and start working on the tank. This is like a 20 gallon tall that was uh, brought over by glass cages over in Dixon, Tennessee. I have picked up 29 gallons and uh, even managed to pick up 55 gallons. I'll tell you, this thing weighed more than both of those and it is just a battleship. You can see by the thickness of the glass, the reinforcement and bracing of the bottom. Uh, this thing was incredibly heavy and, and quite hard to move. I had a bit of a sore back the next day. But I went ahead and gave it a real good, a real good cleanup um, using, uh, uh, using products like Fritz uh, in preparation for adding this background. This is a Velomax background and I've certainly shown you how to add those in many, many videos. You can see there, it's uh, once you attach it and uh, trim it, it just looks really, really good. It's very simple. And if you ever grow tired of it, you just simply peel it off. But you got to make sure that the back panels are very, very clean. I then placed the aquarium on the uh, on that shelving that I had put together there, and the aquarium was now ready, ready for setup. So I took that fluorite, the fluval, the fluval substrate that is uh, made specifically for uh, for plants. I didn't rinse it. I just left it nice and uh, nice and dirty, full of as much bacteria as possible, and I went ahead and dumped it into the 20 gallon tall. Now because that aquarium has that bracing on the sides, it created a perfect indention in the bottom of the tank for me to, uh, to place the, this special substrate. Because I wanted to go ahead and have the um, the outside of the tank. I wanted it to look like the color of the uh, substrate that I that I purchased to cap this uh, this plant friendly substrate. So I went ahead and got this in place and 
and really cleaned up along the edges of it and then covered the whole thing with, um, with 20 pounds of a, a Carib C product and I'll show you here but I made sure the edges were really nice and clean because I didn't want any of the black substrate to show on the outside of the tank. I've sped this up a little bit because it took a lot longer than either one of us have for this video. <laughs> so I went ahead and, and dropped in this uh, this Carib C product. It's an eco-complete product and I'll tell you something uh, about this. It, it really shocked me how fast it was clean. I gave it like a couple stirs in a bucket and the water started running off clean. I mean, it was just a very, I was just very surprised and pleased at the, uh, at how quickly I was able to get this, this substrate ready for the aquarium. For anyone that's ever had to uh, rinse off something like crushed coral, I mean, it can take 10, 15 rinses before you're getting water to run off clean. Water ran off clean with this substrate after the second rinse. So I was ready to go ahead and uh, after capping off that, after capping and, 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 and introducing the new substrate, I was able to go ahead and fill up the tank. Uh, before doing this, I did add some conditioner. You, um, uh, you don't want to, uh, here's the bag of the uh, Supernaturals, just so you know what it is. Carib Sea Supernaturals comes with a little clarifying agent that you can add and uh, just be sure just be sure whenever you do anything like this that you condition the water and in this case I used a little bit of this Fritz complete because I wanted the water going into this tank to um, not have a negative impact on the beneficial bacteria that I was bringing into the tank with with that fluval substrate and and with the sponge filter that I'll be pulling out of the beta tank. So I went ahead and, and filled the tank up. And again, I was uh, very pleased at how clear the water looked as, as the tank filled up. So I wasn't gonna be getting that, uh, you know, month of, uh, of cloudiness. They provide you with this little clarifying agent. You drop it into the tank and it's supposed to help. I suspect that it binds to some of the things that would normally make a tank look a little cloudy. And that way it makes those particles uh, able to be picked up by a, a filter a lot more easily because they're actually bound to, to that clarifying agent. So I did put that in there and proceeded to fill the tank with uh, 78 degree water because I was thinking I might bring over and put a fish in right away. And here it is uh, full, still with the plate in place. One thing that surprised me in the process was um, when I transferred the cherry barbs over to the 29 gallon, it surprised me how vicious those uh, tetras were. They really went after that baby cherry barb to the point where I had to actually put him in a, in a netted enclosure out of fear that he was going to get either killed or eaten or both by the uh, by the serpe and the lemon tetras. So in the last few weeks I've had more aggression in my community tank than I've had in my African cichlid tank. <laughs> you can you can see the video on on how I turned an African cichlid tank into a community tank. I'll put a link I'll put a link here for that. So this, this has been my most aggressive tank in the last week or two. Uh, very surprising, didn't, didn't think Tetras would act that way, but hey, you know, live and learn. I guess the, the old thing, if it fits in their mouth, or if they think they can get it in their mouth, they're gonna try to. So the tank uh, was able to clear up a little bit, as you can see here. And I think that looks a lot better than that eight gallon horizon, which, I know what they were trying to do with that background, but the way the background would stick out and, and then have that open area on the bottom of it, it made it very difficult to keep clean and was actually very, very conducive to algae growth uh, because it provided a, a, a very, very well lit surface area close to the light source. So uh, I think I'm gonna enjoy this tank a lot more. I put a piece of driftwood in it, 
a little bit of Anubias that was super glued with some super glued gel to a piece of rock. I added some um, wisteria and uh, a little bit of a floating, some Sprite that I'm floating. I'll probably float some of the wisteria too. So I'm kind of, ha I'm happy with the way it looks. I'll probably add another rock in the, in the left side. And now the question is, what do I add to this tank? If you like the uh, channel, be sure to hit the bell, subscribe, hit that thumbs up. And uh, if you have any ideas what you think I should add to this aquarium, go ahead and uh, note them below. And uh, we'll, we'll uh, you know, we can talk about it uh, during, uh, during some of the live streams. I talked about it on the last live stream. And the consensus, the consensus was, uh, was guppies and uh, filling it up with some colorful guppies. There were some other choices as well. And we'll see what I end up with. Certainly stay tuned. And we will talk about this and a whole bunch of other stuff in the, um, in the, in the cichlids and coffee live stream. And that's every, every Saturday at 11 a.m. Central. I hope to see you there, my friends. That's it for me. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.